What's up, I'm Vin, and today I want to take a look at one of the most evil limit questions I've seen in a long time from AP Calculus. So we have this limit here, and one thing students think about for a question like this is they look at x squared minus 1, and they say x squared minus 1 is continuous, which is true. x squared minus 1 is continuous, so if you were finding just the limit of x squared minus 1, you could find the limit just by plugging in. So they attempt this limit by saying f of the limit as x approaches 0 of, and then we have x squared minus 1 on the inside. And if you simplify it this way, what you're going to have is you're going to have f of, and if we were to plug in 0 here, we're going to have 0 squared minus 1, which would give us f of negative 1. And they look at this and say f of negative 1 is equal to 1. So they say this is choice B. <coughs> but no, we cannot do this here. This is a very dangerous bear trap. The problem with this is that when we find the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared minus 1, and we get negative 1. The problem is that f of x is not continuous at negative 1. So we cannot find this limit simply by plugging 0 into the middle and then evaluating the resulting expression. So now there are different students that fall into a different trap and they say, OK, well, when I plug in x equals 0 to the inside, I get negative 1. So maybe what I'll do is I'll find the limit as x approaches negative 1 of just f of x. And when they look at the graph here, they say, all right, on the left side, I'm heading up to 3. On the right side, I'm heading up to 2. So since my left and right limits don't are not equal to each other at negative 1, that means our limit is non-existent. So choice E. <coughs> but no, choice E is also a very dangerous bear trap. So then how are we going to handle this? Well, what you want to think about for this question is think about what x squared minus 1 looks like. x squared minus 1 is a parabola and it hits the y-axis at negative 1 down here like this. But now think about what is the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared minus 1. And what I think about for this question here, and we have to be very careful how we approach this, is that as x approaches 0, our y value is approaching negative 1, but it's approaching negative 1 from above at values that are greater than negative 1. So we are approaching negative 1 from the right side. So then what this tells us, because when we approach 0 from the left and right, we're going to reach negative 1 from above, this tells us we could rewrite the limit as the limit as x approaches. We're going to be approaching negative 1, but once again, we're going to be approaching negative 1 from the right side from values greater than negative 1. So now when we evaluate this limit here, we're finding the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right side of f of x. And we look to this graph here and see that when we approach negative 1 from the right side, our y value is approaching 2. So the solution here is going to be choice c. Our limit is equal to 2. But now let's say that explanation didn't do this justice. This is the actual function f of x that I used to build this graph here. And if I replace each x with x squared minus 1, notice what I'm going to get over here on the inside of this piecewise function. And if I simplify it, I'm going to get this equation here in purple. So now when I want to find what is the limit as x approaches 0, notice that for x to approach 0, we would have to be on this last piece here where x is greater than 1. So I would find this limit by plugging in 0 to this expression here, and I would have 0 to the 4th minus, let's just make this a little neater, we have minus 2 times 0 squared plus 2, and this would simplify to 2, which would also give us choice C. 